record with the cloud. Okay, cool. We are recording. And the only reason I wanted to do the recording is, is that uh, for anybody else that may want to view it later, mm -hmm. we are okay, ready. So, so at last Jenkins World, I spoke to Kosuke about trying to revitalize the special interest group, which mm -hmm. is near and dear to my heart. Yeah, uh, and he recommended I reach out to the two of you. So we did that on Gitter, and, and here we are. Um, so I thought that we should at least like revisit focus areas, try to identify like, why did this sizzle out in the first place? Is the scope of this SIG too narrow or too poorly defined? And try to figure out ways to revitalize it and get engagement going. Try to figure out strategies for like maintaining an agenda into the future so that we you know, aren't scrambling on a month by month basis to try to figure out uh, what we're gonna talk about. Uh, so I feel like I have the least amount of open source experience managing communities. So I, I'm excited to have your guys' expertise here to, to help with that. Um, so I can start, I can sort of just rattle off the existing focus areas as a launching point, or do you guys have any ideas for, uh, do we want to start from scratch and try to reimagine what we think this should be, or do we want to start with what's there and, and try to iterate on that? I think the, I want to, I want to say start from scratch and just make it something new and fresh. But then again, I don't know if that's the right way to do it because I think we have to identify what was previously done and why it fizzled out so it doesn't happen again. But that's just my take. Hot take. <clears throat> so, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, so Sorry. like I, I can speak to like the origin of the SIG at least. So two Jenkins worlds ago, so that'd be 2018, I guess. Um, Kosuke sort of saw a talk that I gave at Jenkins World. He saw some work that Austin Witt was doing with Jenkins Spock, and there was sort of a, a bubbling, I guess, of cool, interesting projects in the community that are focused on how do people author their, their Jenkins files and how can we make that experience of, of doing pipeline development easier for folks. Um, so the Jenkins templating engine was one example. Austin Witt from, from HomeAway had developed a unit testing framework for pipelines called Jenkins Spock. Um, and then obviously Andrew Bayer was involved. Obviously declarative is, is probably the primary and most commonly used framework for developing pipelines at this point as a simple, easy uh, user interface for developing pipelines. So I think the general theme of this was really around developer experience for Jenkins pipeline as code in all the forms that that might involve. So including things like how can we make static code analysis easier? And you know, how can we make it easier for people to identify issues in their pipelines before they blow up in production? Um, different tools that might make it easy. Like basically, how do we apply the same best practices from software development when we're building applications? How do we take those principles and apply them to developing pipelines as code is sort of how I think about it. I think that's just a good place to start right there. So, Hmm. So talking about the engineering practices, uh, uh, coding tools, stuff like that. Um, so here's the, here's the thing. I actually, it was, it was an interesting, I don't know if you guys, had, you guys weren't in Lisbon. Um, and I, I gave a talk on pipeline, what, what's going on with, with declarative. And it was interesting for me because it was one of the more pointed Q and A sessions afterwards of people asking like, when is this feature gonna happen? When is that feature gonna happen? And, and also, um, uh, one, several in particular were like, okay, what about developer tools? What about testing? What about deb debugging and that kind of thing? And um, <laughs> while I, I mean, I think there's a, there's a sort of a trade off here. On one side, we want this to be a, a vibrant community. We want it to be people, you know, making it, uh, new things and, and moving this forward. But at the same point, the more there's, there's, a, there's also a counterbalance to that of do less in pipeline, right? Um, of like pipelines should be the glue, not the, not the workhorse, right? 
and I guess, so the question that I have is, is sort of like, is more developer tooling really, I mean, it's what people are saying they want. Is that what they really need? And is that really where we want to go? And they're not saying that, like, let's like, not do it. I'm more just like, I want to kind of maybe make sure that we're working on the same assumptions, right? Um, would it would it make sense to say we need to define a charter? Also, am I coming in okay on my mic, or does it sound like a robot? Uh, you're sounds okay to me. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm wondering maybe if a charter needs to be defined, but I think that should be more what you guys think. Stephen, I I saw you talking, but I didn't actually like hear you. I don't know if that was me or in general. Switching. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Um, so yeah, I, I think a charter might be, I think themes maybe like a charter might be a little overkill until we really know the, the vision that we have. Like, I, I think that you're, you're right on the right track, Liam. We're like, we want to make pipeline development simple, right? Your pipeline shouldn't, if you can't build your application without your pipeline, your pipeline is probably doing too much, right? From a, from a, I don't know, best practices perspective, if a purist about it. So it's really, in, in my opinion, about how do we make the abstractions, you know, the right way so that pipeline development is simple. So developer experience doesn't mean that we make it more complicated and we add a bunch of tools in there so that people can do more advanced things. It's more about, how do we make it easier to do powerful things simply? Uh, like, I don't know, I'm trying to break out of my like JTE hat that I always have on my head, but thinking of the Jenkins sampling engine is like, it's an abstraction for making pipelines simple. And how can we apply that with or without JTE? Like it's declarative, right? Declarative took over so well because it, it was a simple facade on top of a complex pipeline DSL. So, when I'm thinking developer experience, I'm thinking like, how, how can we make pipelines that scale easily, don't require a, a large technical barrier to entry to develop, and how can we validate those simply defined pipelines in a way that you know if they're gonna work before you actually run them, right? So that, that gets a little bit into linting, a little bit into unit testing. Um, but I agree with you that, that we don't wanna like, add tooling in there for advanced parallelization when like that's really not something that your pipeline should probably be responsible for. And I, I mean, like, um, I, I, I kind of feel the same way about debugging, right? I mean, I like if like there, to me anyways, philosophically, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I pushed back against debugging because like, well, if you're doing declarative, you really don't want to debug that. And I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, um, it's also just, it's the kind of problem that we could spend a lot of time on. And I'm not sure that it's where the biggest, like as, as an example of debugging, is I'm sure that's where that's the biggest gain in experience, like in positive experience, right? One of the things that I think is, yeah. is critical is identifying, when we think of a charter, right? I think we have right. to have a charter, but okay. the charter has to be defined that we know what the charter, problem it's trying to solve but in order to know what problem we're trying to solve we also we need to know the person we're trying to solve the problem for so i'm wondering if it makes sense to before we do that start to create personas so we kind of know who our users are because if we have a new user that's never really used jenkins they don't know what you know what they don't know like we have somebody that's sort of intermediate they may have used somebody else's they don't know what they don't know and if there's somebody advanced you know they may have an opinion but they're not looking at it from the new user or intermediate intermediate user i think that makes sense i think along along those veins there's also like scale personas which is sort of how i think about it you know the the needs of a person running a pipeline for an individual application are different from like a central devops team that helps support CICD for multiple right. teams simultaneously, right? Um, so 
from a debugging Maybe perspective. Maybe that falls like, under use case. So we have personas and we have use cases. Okay. That I makes sense. So when I'm thinking about making pipelines easier, I, you know, I love the pipeline syntax tool. I would love it more if it was in my IDE. Yeah. Um, right. So little things like that, like how do we, how do we make it easier for people to figure out the right syntax without having to go to the pipeline syntax tool necessarily, or, um, I know these are grandiose visions that are not easy to solve. Um, but I, I've got to think that the same implementation or design that led to Jenkins Spock by inspecting the class files and pulling out the, being able to mock those things, you should be able to use a similar style API to bubble up the, the syntax of expected pipeline stuff. Um, so I, I, I don't want to get into solutioning in this meeting, but just thinking about when I'm sitting down to write a pipeline, I don't want to have to have Jenkins open to figure out what the syntax is to do that necessarily. Um, I know that I know we're not going to get into tooling. I know VS code has done some stuff around this and they have some nice little linting tools, but I don't think, I think it's very rudimentary. It could be a lot better. Yeah. I mean, I, so I, I'm on a DevOps team as part of a, a huge company and I see all the common problems that people new to Jenkins hit and it's things like, that static code analysis could help with. Like you have a distributed build architecture and you, you did a file exist, but you never unstashed or checked out any files, right? So sometimes that code's gonna work if you got lucky and it ran on the same node twice. Other times it's not going to, but like there's some common patterns that are detectable from a code standpoint that could lead to unreliable pipelines. But the number of those, those cases are probably not large enough to justify an entire like static code analysis endeavor. Um, there's some interesting stuff too with like Jenkins file runner. Like I know that project started up. I don't know if it's still in development, but how can we, how can we run mock pipelines locally without necessarily needing a real application to be testing against just to make sure that everything is going to work as expected. Like Jenkins Spock got us to mock, like mock unit testing. Is there anything that can get us to integration testing without a full-fledged Jenkins instance? Um, well, essentially, Jenkins file, right runner, Jenkins file Runner is a, effectively a, a, a full-fledged instance, right? It is, it's a Jenkins, right? So. Yeah. But I, I, but what you mean by that is by not spinning up a whole new server or a whole new, I don't know, what, I don't know where, how you want to distinguish that, but uh, a long running Jenkins as opposed to a, uh, ephemeral one yeah that that's probably as close as as you can get right now given jenkins current architecture um so maybe we just start with like our first couple meetings our interviews with the community like instead of the three of us trying to figure out who are all probably jenkins experts sitting down and trying to figure out what the problems are it would be interesting to get people together and talk about like what are your challenges that you're having and that the people you're working with are having. It's sort of a hard problem because the people that are involved in the community are probably not the people that are the newest at it, right? If you look at the total population of people using Jenkins and then the percentage of those involved in a special interest group, you probably have a not very representative sample of the actual user base. Um, but yeah, what I, if think, we got I think there's a survey together. together. <clears throat> That'd be interesting. Like I wonder I how that quickly turning into like a support for, uh, forum, right? Like, hey, fill out this survey, and we we get questions that are like, I have this specific use case and this specific problem. How can Jenkins make my use case easier? <laughs> yeah, we would probably need to tailor. I know in another community that I work on, uh, in where when we do surveys for our SIGs, we're extremely like we pour over the questions we're going to ask and think about it thoroughly to not turn it into a help desk thing or, or a gripe fest, uh, but more to try to get meaningful data out of it and then, you know, use some analytics to cross reference that data against other things. So maybe that's something, you know, that's just a suggestion, something we might be able to do. Like if we got a survey together, we got together with maybe 
you know, the, the advocacy group and, and Alyssa, and then had that survey go out and then sort of see what we get back. But we would need to, as a team, really decide what the questions are going to be if we went that route. I think it would be a good thing to do because it gets a pulse of the community. But I totally see the other side of that. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Go ahead. Go ahead, Liam. So maybe we're also scoping this too small. Like we're talking a lot about the pipeline author's experience. Maybe we can also expand this to be the pipeline consumer's experience, right? My role is frequently, I build a pipeline that app teams use and I field a lot of questions from developers about their pipeline. And it's always things like the pipeline's broken. I'm like, well, your unit test failed. Like, how can we make it easier as a consumer of the pipeline to understand exactly what went wrong and why? Um, so if it yeah, becomes more a, a pipeline experience SIG instead of just an authoring SIG, it gives us a couple more avenues of conversation and features. Yeah, to that's why I think personas are going to be critical. I think they're going to help us drill down to what we're looking to solve based off of the persona. Yeah, I, I think I think definitely at least at least looking at what our yeah I think that the personas at least are, are useful for for focusing our discussion like who are what 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 sort of thing are we and sort of grouping the the kind of thing that we're going to work on. Um, well, uh, if you got if you guys are okay with it, one of the uh, I'm going to take an action item <clears throat> okay. to start drafting up between now. Uh, I have another question, but I'll say. Between now and our next meeting, I'm going to create a new doc that I will link into the notes here at some point this weekend, okay. where I'll start creating the personas. Okay. Yeah, we can. I have a lot of stuff there. from other communities that I can use, uh, at least to get started the framework, and it makes it a little easier to do. Sure. Stand on the shoulders of giants. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so, um, speaking of of feedback from the community, we have at least at least one, and I'm pretty sure I've got a link to another one from a year ago, um, or from, yeah, from various ones of these, uh, the sort of pipeline discussions that happen at Jenkins World, and we can talk about those some too. Um, those, I will say, did also turn into, hey, I want this feature, or hey, there's this bug, um, a lot more than, <clears throat> but um, at least in, um, <clears throat> in Lisbon, the interesting thing that came out of that was the, the same problem was actually, we had like, it was a bird of birds of feather kind of move around thing. And the same thing was brought up uh, two or three times. It was like the same, like one issue. And it's a longstanding issue with the, the way that we do parameters, right? Um, anyways, point that was, the thing that was funny about it was just that it, that, it, that each new group had basically started with that same thing. So you get, I think we have some things that we can address that are like, oh, hey, we want this one behavior to be different. Um, but usually the, what happens with those, like for in this case with parameters, that behavior is, is the reason why it is the way it is, is so sent is buried under layers that we, that in order to move it, like it involves some really hard thinking about, okay, what exactly can we do, right? Um, the same thing happened. Like people are, people have asked for, hey, I the, the sec, like not, not the second most common, but the but certainly one of the top top ten is is, hey, can we can we why don't, why don't we do a YAML pipeline? Why don't we do pipeline in YAML? And I'm like, that's great, except for like once you if you extend that, like it sounds great on the on the surface, but then when you get into actually dealing with what does that mean and where does that end up, the it goes so declarative having a YAML generator, or like a YAML parser, right? That I don't feel um, like it'd be a big lift to take a YAML intake and send it through the same abstract syntax tree. I'm pretty sure I like dove through the declarative code, and there's like it, it takes your Groovy, and there's a JSON output and a YAML output. Um, the JSON output. There's no YAML output right now. Um, but, but that doesn't mean there like couldn't be. Thing. Yeah. That seems like a, a, forgive me for saying not complicated, but like if we have a JSON output, typing that to YAML shouldn't be. Right, except for, except for when you, you go down a certain distance. Uh, for instance, when you get to steps, 
are the steps in YAML or are they groovy? Like what is, and, and for those like, uh, even discounting the script block, like when you, when you start working with them, the, 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 the step itself needs to be written sort of groovy ish. Like we could kind of convert them to a certain point and maybe make the parameters. But then once you get down to the parameters themselves, they're going to have to be groovy, some degree of groovy at some point. Um, yeah, you'll end up with some nasty thing where like the value is a string that you parse through a groovy engine during the invocation of that thing. Uh, so which, that's that's right. the kind of like, but that, that's that that sort of like one. It's like oh, this is great. This is great. Oh, oh, this is not great. <laughs> um, oh, this got bad. This got yeah. And unless I'm, you talk about like how do we drastically reduce the scope? Like you want a YAML syntax, okay? But here's the subset of features that we can support to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. If you want to have an array of steps that run inside a container image and execute some sort of script, you could write that parser in like a day, right? It just iterate over the YAML, run docker.image.inside, and then run a shell script. Um, so the value of it is smaller, but for those that don't have complex pipelines, it provides some value. But, um, okay, and I'm not saying we shouldn't do this, but like as an example, um, Maven has supported attributes for year for for a decade now right nobody nobody uses it like everybody wanted it and nobody uses it it would make it would make all your maven files like way more understandable way more easy to read nobody like it is it has never been never gained traction so are we going to document both like are we going to show are we now going to start showing yaml for our pipeline too and I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not arguing against this. I'm like, this is, this is when you actually take this to like, okay, yes, I can write it in a day. Boom, there it is. Like when you actually like take this to its logical conclusion, it gets a lot harder um, and a lot more yeah. like, what is this supposed to look like? I agree. And I think I have a pretty like hard lined opinion on most things. And my, my take on this in general is like, listen, if you, just learn declarative. Like what, what does YAML give you that you can't do with declarative, right? Like, I don't know that I understand the actual value proposition of YAML, especially when you start to look at like how easy it is to mess up indentation in YAML and like, <laughs> then we have a whole nother. This is a topic. such a loaded topic. Right. But and I, I think now, we have that, our, now, as long as you're, of, go ahead, go ahead. As long as you're arguing, mm -hmm. as long as you're arguing, uh, uh, against YAML, I'll argue for it now, which is to say that you get all the schema, you can do a whole bunch of things easier. I mean, like you get high, syntax highlighting for free, and that, like I've, I've heard all the arguments the other side of this do. So, I, I think one of the yeah. things that uh, I, I know what I'm about to say will be extremely controversial. So uh, <laughs> please forgive me. Uh, I think one of the welcoming facts to YAML is it. They, some people feel the, the, the bar is a lot lower for entry to newcomers than it would be to say, learn, uh, you know, declarative, you know, groovy sort of syntax. So people like look at that and they say, oh, I can understand YAML easier than I could if I have to go learn, you know, a, a Java based subset of, you know, groovy. And, and they're just like, it's easier to do but YAML. But we have a, a blue ocean drag and drop coding. Right. Um, I'm going to pivot a little bit. Like okay. I think that in general, the pipe like Jenkins does a fan and I use this analogy for the templating engine too, is like, it does a fantastic job documenting the oven, like all the cool features and everything that is possible to do with it, but it doesn't give you any recipes. Right. And I think Jenkins X starts to go this route a little bit, but maybe something we talk about is like, you know, we can't tell you how to do your pipeline, but here are some common design patterns uh, and how they're implemented in Jenkins pipeline so that, uh, yeah, declarative might be intimidating to some newcomers, but if they were to copy and paste, like, here's your Git flow pipeline, just change these lines of code to match up to your tools. And over time, as you get familiar with it, extend this to be what you need and give people a better starting point than just like, here's the syntax documentation. Um, that might be an avenue too. Now I'll play devil's advocate on that. 
Uh, currently, we have in, in, in the Jenkins.io site, we have a Node.js example for a pipeline. And one of the things I see in the Gitter channel, more often than not, at least especially the last week or two, is people that cannot get that running. And so now we, like, people, like, I found myself and, and a few others are answering these, like, Node.js questions on this pipeline because people don't understand how to use it. So I think if we do recipes, which I think is a great idea, we have to make it as simplistic as possible, including the environment to which it runs on. So people understand, this is what you're gonna need to make this work. Yeah, and if we accompany it with a Docker file that spins up a Jenkins pre-configured or something. Um, I used to teach programming and robotics to kids in, over the summers in college. And when I was teaching if statements, I would say, if quotes, conditions, and you don't know how many times I went to a computer and they're like, it's not running. And it's because they literally typed if quotes, condition. <laughs> so I, I definitely, that resonates with me that if we give them examples, they're going to be uh, our major source of support tickets. Um, but yeah, like, okay. so the, the Docker file to spin up an already integrated sample application with some, some dummy reference architecture pipelines. At least then we, we can hope that as long as you have Docker installed, you're going to get the properly configured instance that has everything you need to run these examples. Mm. Um, almost like Katakota scenarios. Yeah. Maybe that's what we need to do. Create some sort of, no, I don't like know. learning lateral, right? Like, yeah. Like there's cl there's cloud bees university, right? Like something similar on the open source side. That's like, here's a scenario. We're going to walk you through it in Katakota. You can spin up a Jenkins instance as part of the environment for that uh, and embed it in the documentation site. Uh, there's overhead there and there's orchestration and it's, it's not an easy lift, but that might be another like learning opportunity for people one of the one of the first things i i sort of was looking at when i started advocating with you know, talking about jenkins and writing blog posts was the the on-ramp for new users right so this is this is the same kind of thing where it's like look how do we create an on-ramp that isn't that that isn't you know vertical <laughs> it needs to be a smooth sort of transition into okay here's this thing and then like now you can like now you're, you're up to this level, right? So. I think in the creation of yeah. personas, you have to also have some type of handoff per persona. So that way, hmm. if you know somebody as is, is the, at the beginner, I've never used Jenkins, but I now have to or want to, they need to have that, the handoff to the next persona should also exist. So sort of that bridge Yeah. And that can look like, I mean, I don't want to be super corporate, but it's like, here's a demo lab. If you can complete the scenario, you're an advanced user, or you're a intermediate user. So we give them like, right. I don't know, a, a self-paced, take it if you want to test so that we can like point you in the right direction based upon what you already know. Exactly. And then there's a prerequisite. So you can't, if somebody comes in and says, I should be here, they, sh you know, we have a prerequisite that says you shouldn't be here unless you've done this. Yeah, I found that everyone either thinks they're a beginner or thinks they're an expert, right? No one, <laughs> no one is going to come to and say, I'm in the middle of the road. They're either going to say, I've never used Jenkins before, or I know everything about Jenkins. Um, I, don't know. I don't know there's an accident I'm out of that statement, but it's, that's my experience with uh, trying to get people to evaluate their readiness for different topics. Okay, I, I want to switch gears to ask a question, something that I have on here. Uh, one of the things I have, meeting cadence. Do we want to do yeah. weekly? Do we want to make it bi-weekly? Well, we could do this. This time works for me every other week, but it's actually, I think it would be the reverse of what we had. Like, I would need to be one week shifted, I'm pretty sure. So you would, um, next week, this time, you would be able to make it and then following every other week after. Is that correct? Yeah, that would be, that would work for me. I'm for sure. 
Stephen, what about you? I think that works for me. My schedule is like a roll of the dice given different client sites. I, meetings just pop up for me all the time. It's kind of hard to know for sure. Um, I can try to be strict about I'm not accepting a, a meeting. But if someone says you have to go meet with the CTO of this government agency, I don't have much yeah, of an no. ability to say no to that. Well, I mean, maybe the other thing to do uh, here is just, I mean, I can push things around and say, look, I'm, this is important. We've got to do this. Um, uh, and we could meet weekly, even if there isn't a lot to do, like make the time and show up. And then like, if there isn't a lot to talk about, great. Or if, you know, we don't have the ability to do things the, the I think part of where we sort of fell off last time, I can talk to like why things fell off is just because, because the meetings were far enough apart and we were trying to sort of boil the ocean as it were. Um, so, yeah, we had, a, we had a, a lot of different things to, to look at and a long time between meetings. So people sort of ran off to do other, like you sort of like, oh, I have to do this thing here. I have to, like you get distracted. So um, I also think the meetings weren't very conversational. Like yeah. it was a lot of someone giving a presentation on something that they had done mm. and not as much as talking about listening. So I think there's a space for that. Like maybe you know, every third Friday or something, we try to bring in use cases to, for people to show off, like examples that might be, I don't know, thought provoking, but doing it every time it sort of just becomes something that's easy to skip because you'll just watch the, the presentation later. Right. But if it's an ongoing conversation, that's something you want to be present for to help guide. Fair enough. I mean, the, the flip side of that is, though, at a certain point, it's like, well, when are we going to do this? Well, when we when do we have time, right? Um, yeah. The perennial open source problem. Like, mm. uh, a lot of features, but not a lot of time to, to yeah. do them outside of our nine to five. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, so, for the, but, so what I'm going to do, just, just to close that loop, I'm going to move. Uh, the meeting I think we have set for weekly right now, I'm going to leave it for next Friday, same time, but then following that, I will move it to a bi-weekly. And then we can decide from there if that's, you know, too long in between and, and maybe we, you know, we work in, in Gitter. I do think one of the first things that's going to be critical for us is the personas. So if everybody's okay with the meeting cadence, I'll, I'll go ahead and action that. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Uh, I'm looking at the existing SIG uh, page that's available, which it looks like you found as well, Marky, since you've got the document open. So somewhere here we've got meeting notes from the previous session. Yeah, um, um, and uh, I guess the action item for me is to uh, go dig up more of those. Okay, I'm looking at the link right now. The SIG and uh, I think it says Oleg. One of the things I just noticed that popped out of me Oleg to start a ML discussion. Is that a machine learning discussion? I have really no idea. So. That would be really <laughs> That'd awesome. Be awesome. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so I think we have what we need between now and the next meeting. What do you okay. think? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, we'll we'll get the documents sort of to go and the start talking about personas, and then so next time we'll talk about the sort of cover some of the anything interesting from those docs, and then also sort of go over personas and see if we have a see what comes out. Yep, I will again. I'll share okay. that document out in the uh, in the channel. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Anything I'm going to spend time you? thinking about like in a in a perfect world. What does writing a Jenkins pipeline look like? Like, I think that that's really the problem we're trying to solve here. Is forget about what's currently possible. Just like it, in the Nirvana state, how would you want this to work? And then figure out what's possible and how we compromise to that that end state. So I right. think that sort of goes back to 
the charter idea that you, that you were talking about, Marky, is like our charter is how do we make this as easy as possible? We make it as easy as possible by like in a perfect world, how does this work? And I don't know that we have a consensus definition for what that actually means. Yeah, yeah. and I, but I, I think when we do have that and it's defined and it's met with personas, people will come in and they'll say, oh, I'm like this person in your, you know, I see you guys put your charter out there and you have personas, I'm that person and I'd love to follow that track. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so another thing I have, what I've got another action item here I gotta write. I'm gonna make another action item. I am going to, I need to get this meeting cadence added to the calendar. Um, I can, I have access to, yeah, the, the, the Jenkins calendar, you mean? Yeah. Um, I have access to that so I can. Oh, I'll leave it to you then. Uh, I mean, if someone doesn't already, if neither of you have it already, then uh, we can just make it simple and I can do that. Okay, um, that and one other thing we need to do. Oh, I, I'm going to get, a, I'm gonna get two emails out. I will revitalize the email to our pipeline auth SIG saying, hey, this is what we're working on. We just met, here's a link to the recording. Here's our document of things we're gonna work on. I'm gonna get that out to our SIG emailing list as well as to the dev mailing list. Okay, cool. And that way we can see if it, you know, drums up excitement. Okay. Uh, okay. So, did I create this for myself, or did the, what, the thing on the, yeah the thing on the calendar? I'm trying to remember. Doesn't look like it. Ah, there you are. No, you made it. Got it. Oh uh, yeah, this one I made. Yep, that's what I. Was, Uh, looks like you've already got it set to weekly. But this one is no. not on the community calendar. Uh, oh, right, 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 right. Okay. That's yeah, this is more of this one. is. My I'm like, but it's already here. No, it's not on the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> you already did it. What's the? <clears throat> yeah, it's slow. Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, so got it. Um, and I'll we'll keep using your Zoom for now. If that's okay. Yeah. Yep, that's totally fine. Um, I mean, I think there's a. We could also do it on the. Actually, we should probably do it on the on the YouTube CD. Uh, so I so here's the thing. I am. Uh, we can keep it. Uh, hold on, just a second. I have to mm -hmm. yell something. Yep. Julie, check into your flight. It's forty. Sorry. Uh. We can leave this Zoom. I'm waiting for the finalization for me to be a YouTube admin. Oh, I can wow. upload this video to YouTube. Okay. And then something I want to do later on down the line is uh, I will link the YouTube and create automation so it'll automatically upload it every time. Because I don't, that's what I do for another community because I do not like have to manually upload things. I want it to happen just sort of. Okay. Yeah, all, right. all the things. Yeah. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, all right. Well, then we'll leave it at this for now and we can. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks. All right. Um, Anyone have anything else? Okay. So do we have the uh, meeting and yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't have anything else. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thank awesome. You. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend, everybody. I'll see you next week. Later. Bye -bye. Cheers.